Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm Chris and this is Xiaomi's Mi 10 Lite 5G, a Snapdragon 765G mobile phone. It does come with six gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. And that starts at just 349 euros. The screen in this is AMOLED as well. It offers also a 48 megapixel camera. So in this particular review, I'm gonna go over this phone in detail. And just to point out that yes, this was actually sent out to me by Xiaomi. Okay, I've got this and then the Mi Note 10 Lite. They are two review units, my first review units ever from them. But is that gonna change my reviews, my style? Not at all, so do not worry about that. Let's take a look first at what we get in the box. So we have a 22.5 watt charger. This phone also supports power delivery three spec and quick charge four. Now the charging rate of the phone is only actually 20 watts and more on that later on in the battery life and charging time review portion of this video. Type C to USB cable, we also get a user guide, warranty card, and there is a SIM tray tool, of course, and a TPU case is included. So this case does offer good protection for the phone, and it fits it perfectly, of course, coming from the manufacturer. So according to my scales here, it weighs 197 grams, and it is approximately 8.5 millimeters thick. That is measuring it in the middle. Now the camera does protrude by an additional almost two millimeters. The phone comes in three colors, two of which I can show you. So this is the cosmic gray that I have. And then there is this blue to almost green aura color they have as well, which I have with the Zoom edition. And the Zoom edition, this is an imported Chinese model. And I do hope to see an EU release of this one. It has a five times optical periscope camera. Otherwise, it's pretty much exactly the same as this model right here. So on the rear of the phone, we've got some curved glass. That means in hand, it does feel very nice. The front glass here is Gorilla Glass 5. And you can see where the fingerprint reader is located. For me, it should be a bit higher about here. That's what they normally do. Even the Mi Note 10 Lite does actually have the fingerprint reader about here and their K30 Pro and the Poco F2 Pro as well. So it's just a little bit lower down, but it does work very well. It's very quick. Face unlocking as well is excellent. Very fast, then no problems. Now these power button, this power button here and the volume up and down, that is made out of plastic. The frame around the outside is actually all plastic too as well with this one. It's a very solid hard plastic and the paint job and finish on the outside makes it almost feel like it is metal, a very dense plastic that they have used. Now the bezels, you can see that top and bottom, they're not the slimmest there, but I don't think they're too bad. And a front facing camera, well, this one is 16 megapixels. It does have a status LED next to the earpiece. As you can see, it lights up white only with this particular one here. And then, okay, the SIM tray down the bottom, it takes two nano SIMs. There is unfortunately no micro SD card support with this one. Now the Type-C port, this is USB 2 spec, no video out to be expected. And we've got a downwards firing microphone. Up the top, we have a secondary mic for noise cancellation and used in video for stereo. And then we've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with very good quality out of this one. And they managed to include also an IR transmitter, which is really good for controlling various different home appliances like air conditioning, for example. So covered in glass here are the four rear cameras. We've got a dual tone LED flash. Now the main sensor is a 48 megapixel Omnivision sensor. And this one has an aperture of f 1.79. We have an eight megapixel ultra wide, which is probably the weakest camera out of all of the cameras on this one. And that has a field of view of 120 degrees and an f2.2 aperture. There's also two two megapixel cameras. One is for depth information. The other one is for macros. Now we have a fantastic display in this particular phone. It is very good. I'm very happy with this one. The brightness tops out to be 720 nits of brightness. Under display settings right here, we've got our typical options, but what isn't always there is the DC dimming. So this is hardware DC dimming for this Full HD Super AMOLED, sorry, AMOLED panel here. And the color schemes, you can tweak it if you're not happy with it out of the box. So I've noticed that original color for my eyes looks the best, but a lot of people would stick it on auto, which has more of a bluish tint to the whites. But of course you can adjust it, the white balance. If you prefer it a little bit warmer, then that is all there. Now the edge detection sensitivity, very good on the screen as well. And what about accidental palm rejection touches and things like that? So palm rejection is also good. The phone detects that if you're holding it and your palm happens to get in the way, it won't actually register that. That's another good thing to have there. Now, when we go under here into, we've got reading mode as well. We've also got a brightness level there too and dark mode all in the settings. 
and your typical scaling is all there. Now, real world images do look very nice on this particular panel. I love the fact that this is actually a flat screen as well. We've got a curvature on the Mi Note 10 Lite and I prefer this flat panel. I think it's actually a lot better than that one. So on the original mode, the gamma is somewhere between about 2.3 and 2.4. More, I'd say 2.3 here, which is not bad off the 2.2 that we ideally want. So this phone does come with Android 10. We've got MIUI 11 at the time of this video. So it's not shipping yet with MIUI 12. That's going to be a while away yet before we see that. Now, the performance of it, it's very quick. It does feel nice and smooth. It does feel fluid most of the time. Now, occasionally, if you're doing something very demanding, so you're in camera and you decide that I'm going to record, say, 4K video, get out of it, and you go up to recent tasks or apps, you'll see that sometimes, oh, hang on, that wasn't quite a smooth animation. Occasionally, it does happen with this one too, and I'm seeing this a lot with MIUI. Now, we've got the six gigabytes of RAM here. Typically, we have around about half of that is free to us, and I'm just going to clear memory at the moment. Now, I've noticed that a couple of times it's happened just very, very odd, but I will mention it, is that sometimes when I've just gone, well, I've been in a different application, gone up and swiped up and seen that all the icons just disappear for a split second and then they appear again as if MIUI just relaunches in a split second. But overall, it is uh, very good in terms of performance. But I'll get onto now some benchmarks. So the charge time of this one is over an hour, as I mentioned at the start, but just how long? Well, look at this, 84 minutes to go from 3% to 100 with that 20 watt charging that this one does have. Now, I've also tested it out just to get to 32% here. Well, to 30% is gonna take about 20 minutes. So that's not actually too bad. It's still very quick for the size of this battery, which is 4,160 milliamp hours there. And this does give us some really good battery life. Now, this is actually a better score than basically the same phone, which is the Mi 10 Youth Edition that I reviewed in the channel. That got a bit less here, but almost 16 hours puts it right up the top there. It's almost neck and neck really with the Poco F2 Pro and the K30 Pro in terms of battery life. So this is the definite two day mobile phone for most people and even really demanding use will still make it through a full day. Now very good um, signal strength here with GPS. We get a good average and you do see a lot of satellites. I mean 69 in view, 26 in use and you cannot get any better than the three meters of accuracy unfortunately with the Qualcomm chips. Now wireless for a mid-range phone very good. Maximum speeds right next to the router, just, just to see the maximum throughput here, 567 megabits per second. And in my typical spot where I measure, this is downstairs quite a way away from my router. It's still getting over 200 megabits per second. You can see on average, that's actually very good for a medium spec phone. And 2 score, great. Not bad at all for what it is. This is really good performance. And that means the phone doesn't feel like it's definitely not low end. It's quite a good performer here. According to Geekbench score here too as well, Geekbench 5. I mean, it's good. That's, that's good for what is the chipset. So we've got UFS 2.1 storage here and very good sequential read and writes here. Really good speeds and the random reads and writes too. So that is not going to be a bottleneck of this not at all this particular phone. So we've got camera two API level three support. This means look in the future for some Google Gcam ports if you're interested in that. Uh, and a wide vine level one set, of course, with this one. Now the other mod I reviewed because it was a Chinese ROM didn't have it, but we do have it, of course, with this being the global version, global ROM. So that means Netflix and all those sort of things in full HD. So why am I showing you this advertisement about motorbikes? Well, this is one thing that's still in the system app. So the cleaner app or other apps you use, you will see this. And I don't particularly like this. Why do they need to put the adverts in MIUI? At least they're not the kind of ads that I was seeing earlier on. And you can see that's just come up there. When I cleaned out some of the bloatware, this does come with. So there is actually about 1.4 gigabytes of pre-installed stuff that you can easily remove. You just go into your applications and you can just uninstall them. And once I did that, that's where another advert popped up there. So you have about 109 gigabytes free on the 128 gigabyte version here. And there is, uh, right here you can see that I am on the latest version two of the software as well. And the security patch level is April with this one. Onto our audio now. So I have placed a few voice calls. After all, these are phones. So call quality, what's it like? Good, no problems, no problems whatsoever. The other side said that I sounded fine too, and they did as well. The earpiece quality is acceptable. Great, actually. It's not a problem. Now, what about wired tech? So I've tested out some headphones, in-ear ones, 
and they sound excellent. This is one area that Xiaomi definitely, for me, excels in, and that is the analog audio output. And I've also tested out some Bluetooth earbuds. These are the Elite 75Ts, and for some random reason, they did actually disconnect on me, which doesn't normally happen. I don't know why that was. It just hopefully was just a one-off kind of thing there, but I thought I would report that. Now, loudspeaker, down the bottom, just a single one. It actually does sound very good. As you hear from the sample, there's a bit of bass to it and the volume is also very good and it doesn't distort. So it comes with their game turbo. You can add your games in here and they're normally automatically added. So there is an option to boost the performance. And what it's basically doing is just clearing out memory and enabling us to have more memory then for gaming. Now there are settings in here as well that you can set up a do not disturb mode. So if you're in the middle of a Call of Duty gaming session or Mobile Legends, you don't get interrupted, then you're able to do that. And various other little tweaks in there. So you can also do screen capturing. So recording footage at the actual native screen resolution at 30 frames per second, up to 20 megabits per second is the quality you can record. And it actually does come out pretty good and look quite decent. So what about the actual game's performance, the gaming performance? So Call of Duty, I've noticed, runs at 45 frames per second on the maximum frames per second option. Medium to high setting, it does perform really well. Now Shadowgun Legends, a more demanding game, doesn't here suffer from the issue I saw with the Snapdragon 765G in the Mi 10 Youth. That one seemed to throttle down to about 20, 30 frames per second. This at least performs a lot better. It does, as a result, get a little bit warmer, I've noticed, but nothing that's actually alarming in terms of temperatures. So this is, of course, a passively cooled mobile that after one hour of gaming, it will start to heat up and get warm on the back. Around 40 or so degrees is what I have seen, up to about 41, 42. Again, this is actually normal. Onto our cameras now that probably a lot of you are interested in. So, right here we've got our typical photo mode. You can do a two times digital photo, which does degrade the quality a little bit. 48 megapixel mode. Now you normally gain a little bit more in terms of detail, but a little bit more noise and a larger file size. And honestly, it's not really worth it, I think. Portrait mode. Night mode also works with the front facing camera. And the interesting one here is Pro Mode. So Pro Mode, the shutter rate goes up to 30 seconds max, ISO up to 6400 max. You can choose which lens you want to shoot. You can also shoot Pro Mode with 48 megapixels. And there is no RAW, unfortunately, here uh, with the Pro Camera. Now Pro Video Mode 2 is handy, so you can tap and hold to lock the focus and exposure, which is quite good to stop it from shifting out on you. You can also set those individually too if you wanted to. And then you've got your typical other modes in there like AI mode and things like that, which does kind of oversaturate it a little bit. And I wouldn't really use that one AI camera. And also macro right there too. But let's have a look now at some samples shot on the Mi 10 Lite 5G. So this is the main camera, it can shoot 4K 30 frames per second max, so no 4K 60. And it does have really good electronic image stabilization. And you're probably hearing a little bit of wind noise. And if I do sound muffled, it's because I am wearing a mask that I have to by law here. Now when I pan, you'll see that sometimes we get a few little judders, but I'll try and take it really easy here. And you can get some excellent results. So nice sharp 4K video here. Good quality. We'll take a look now at the ultra wide. So the ultra wide also has that excellent electronic image stabilization. Quality now not quite as good. It's 1080p maximum that we have with this one. And I just jog ahead. You can see that stability is so good. As long as you just take it really easy. No real fast movements. This does come out really nice. Now if you're wondering where am I shooting this, this is in Denia Las Rotas. I've now tapped the ultra steady mode. So this should be even smoother. I'm going to just jog down these steps here. See, it's not too bad. Video now with a front-facing camera. So it's 1080p maximum with this. And yes, there is no electronic image stabilization with the front-facing camera. So the crop isn't too bad as a result of this. I'm holding this out at a normal kind of distance. I can extend my arm a little bit more. So if they were to, and hopefully they do this is add electronic image stabilization, the crop would probably be about here then. It brings it in a lot closer, but then the footage wouldn't shake around because you can see if I start to walk, you'll see that it does 
trim her around and move around all over the place. So that's why electronic image stabilization with a front-facing camera would be really good. Now, the audio bit rate is somewhere between 92 and 96 kilobits per second. I hope they can improve upon this because other manufacturers are using 320 kilobits per second, like Xiaomi on their flagships, but their mid-range and low-end phones, they don't tend to do this yet, but hopefully that is going to change. The quality is very good for 1080p video. It's just, we really do need that electronic image stabilization. Right, so what did you think about those camera samples there? A lot of people are worried about that Omnivision sensor, and I think it's somewhere really between, say, the Samsung sensors we typically see or the Sony's. The Sony's are still gonna be better there, the IMX series that we get. Now, it does offer very, very good video stabilization. I am impressed they are making definitely some improvements there with the video stabilization. It just looks really, really good, very smooth. Now, the sharpness, isn't quite there because of the EIS crop. Even though it's 4K, it still is very good and captures so much detail there. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. The weakness with the cameras is the ultra wide, I feel, because the ultra wide camera's eight megapixels, the lens they've gone with, it is okay. Don't get me wrong, I love my ultra wide cameras. It's just when you do crop in, you will see that there is a little bit of distortion on the edges, which is typical. Now the software does correct a little bit of that, but you get a little bit more noise, and it's just not amazing quality there. Now that two megapixel macro, the macro camera, I think a lot of people will probably agree with me on this, that I really wish that Xiaomi had gone with uh, perhaps say a just two times optical or something else. I think a lot more people would use a zoom over a macro there. Anyway, that's just my uh, input on that one there. So what about the rest of the phone? I think the build quality, a lot of people could again be concerned about the plastic on this. It is a plastic frame around the outside. Gorilla glass on the front, glass on the rear, and it doesn't feel cheap at all. This is a very good build quality. This is typical Xiaomi, a really nice screen on this as well. 6.57 inches AMOLED. Very, very good. The fingerprint unlocking works quite quick and fast. It's working a lot better for me than the uh, Note 10 Lite, which will be up and coming in the channel soon, that particular review. Now the location of it, as I pointed out, I think it's just a little too low. I really wish they'd move it up. They've done that with a lot of their phones. So the Note 10 Lite actually has it at a higher position. And then their premium Poco F2, okay, their flagships, and then the K30 Pro as well, doesn't have it, have it in a better location. That's just a minor little complaint there. Really, we have so much on offer here for the price, the base spec for that 349 euros, really, I mean, we've got IR Blaster, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, really good quality, good battery life. There's just so much on offer here. I think they've really done it. This is a very good release. It's just the software optimization. We do need those typical things I point out. I hope that Xiaomi, now that they're sending me review units, I hope they're watching this review as well. That would be nice to get some electronic image stabilization on that front facing camera, just to make that footage a lot more usable for us. We may lose some sharpness, but I think a lot of people will agree with me. That's the trade-off that I think a lot of us will actually be willing to, to take there. Now the audio bitrate, 96 kilobits per second, or sometimes 92. 
I really wish that they would up this to 320 or even 192, something a bit higher, just to give us improved quality there with the audio. That's one of the minor complaints that I co often keep repeating in my videos there. And then MIUI. MIUI is running very well on this, but the occasional little glitch still does appear. I notice that sometimes it will do that split second, you just lose everything that's on the screen and the icons will all suddenly flash back. And it's, I'm talking about a millisecond, it's very, very quick there, but it's there and sometimes the occasional little lag. So optimization is all just really down to software. So if they focus again, they can improve the software, which I'm sure they will with these firmware updates coming through. You have a fantastic phone here for the price. I mean, that Snapdragon, 765 chip is really good. I think a lot of people are going to be very happy with that. A lot of people don't actually need the uh, 865. They don't need the flagship performance. You don't play a lot of games. And even for gaming, this is still really good as I showed you. It does get a little hot to the touch, but I didn't notice any of the problems of it, say, throttling down that I did with the Chinese release, which is the Mi 10 Zoom Edition. Now, I hope a Zoom Edition is also coming to Europe. That would be really great for those of us that want the Periscope five times zoom camera. So in the channel soon will be the review of the Mi Note 10 Lite, and there's a lot of releases from Xiaomi, and I hope to cover more of them. I hope that Xiaomi will send me out more review units as well. So let me know in the comments too, uh, what do you think about this phone? Do you think it's good value for money? What's on offer here? And are they releasing too many phones? Is it getting confusing? It's getting a little confusing even for us reviewers here, but thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you back in the next one.